Hello and welcome to Long Beach Lens. I'm your host, Derek J. Simpson, Executive Director of the Long Beach Community Action Partnership. This is a very special episode of Long Beach Lens because we have the honor of being in the home of Dr. Matthew Jenkins and Mrs. Roberta Jenkins. And we're here today because we're going to talk with them both about the new book, Positive Possibilities, that Dr. Jenkins is the author of and the inspiration for. And I just want to first of all say thank you for welcoming us to your home. Thank you. So uh, there's so much to cover. There's no way we're going to cover everything within the short time that we have. But Dr. Jenkins, let's start out with asking you the question, what inspired you to write this book? Well, uh, in giving lectures in various universities for many, many years, over 30 years, people would, after, after I'd finished, I'd come down and start talking with the audience, and the first thing they'd say, do you have a book? You know, well, you ought to write a book. And for 30 years, I heard this over and over again. So um, one guy told me one day, he said, you know, you have a lot to teach people in your conversation. And um, you ought to seriously think about writing a book. It was then that I thought that perhaps I should. It took now, me three and a half years to write the book. <laughs> now, when he talked about a lot uh, to teach people, who, who would you say would be the intended audience for the book? This audience is for anyone, but particularly younger people who are just getting started. And um, it's really a teaching instrument. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. It teaches you how to succeed. If you fail, it teaches you how to handle that. And there are so many things that uh, are in the book, and uh, it's, 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 it's just a teaching. And in fact, you, you say that it's, it's, you find positive possibilities oftentimes in, through your failures. Exactly right. And that's interesting that you mention that because when I was writing, Throughout the book, I had positive possibilities. That was not supposed to be the name of the book. <laughs> okay. The name of the book supposed to have been a memoir okay. by Matthew Jenkins. But when I finished writing the book, I said, you know, I've got to change the name. <laughs> I said, the name should be Positive Possibilities. And, and what, what does that mean? Positive possibilities mean a mindset that your mind automatically gravitates to the positive part of an entity rather than, well, I don't know if I can do that, the negative. So you teach your mind how to, or you train your mind how to, whenever it faces some obstacle or whatever, it will automatically reflect on the positive possibility of whatever you're trying to do. Now that's easy for you to say, but what would be the process for somebody who's like, wow, I'm intimidated. I, you know, I, I hear what you're saying, but how do, what's the first step? They may not know how to go about that. What would you say to someone, especially well, a young person? <laughs> well, it, it's, um, you have to think about what you're going to do. That's the first thing, you have to think about it. And you have to learn to flip, I call it flipping the switch. You flip the switch from negative to positive. And you say, oh yeah, I can do this. Oh yeah, there's something in here I can get out of that. Mm -hmm. And what that does, it, it, it changes your whole personality and your whole approach to solving problems. Okay, now. Mrs. Jenkins, as you sit there, I know that you are a part of getting the word out about the book, and certainly you have a big role in everything that's led to us being here today. But what are some of the things that you're hearing as you go out and, and support the book's uh, success uh, from the people who've read it or the people that you talk to in the community? I think most of the time people are saying that it's a tool to, to help you succeed at whatever you're trying to do. 
And as Matt was saying, uh, if you're facing an obstacle or you have a problem that you're not able to solve, you think about all the things that, of course, the first thing that comes to your mind is the things that cannot be done. But what can I do? Is this something I can, I can turn into a positive? Right. It's like, you know, somebody says your, your cup is full or it's all half full. Mm -hmm. You know, it's never empty. So there's always there something there. And there's always people around who can help you get where you want to go. That's where you have your mentors mm -hmm. and uh, someone who you know and say, go and say, um, can you help me? This is what I'm facing. Mm -hmm. uh, what, should I, what should be my next step? Mm -hmm. So there's always the, the uh, and that's the positive part of it. So you're always looking for areas of, of um, being able to make it something that, uh, um, that it isn't today. But tomorrow, it can, it can work. And maybe it's something that shouldn't work, and somebody can help you decide that I need to let this go and go and work on something else. Yeah, I tell uh, I used to write, uh, teach students uh, through the USC uh, Business Expansion Program that sometimes writing a business plan, the best thing about it is to show you that that business is really not a good idea. Exactly. And you find that out on paper first before you invest your life savings into that. Exactly. We're talking about positive possibilities, but the fact of the matter is, if we tell the story about your father and you growing up, people can see just how profound uh, that statement is. So can you just share a bit of insight, uh, Dr. Jenkins, on, on your father and what led you to have the, the values that you share today? Well, my dad was almost killed by the Ku Klux Klan. And um, he died when I was two years of age. And I never knew him, but I feel that I really did know him because so many people told me, say, you, God, you're just like your dad. And everything about my dad, they would say that he was honest, had integrity, great appearance. Um, he uh, did the best he could all, at all times, hardworking, and I had this image in my mind that, of what he was, so I followed the image. And um, the guy was great. This guy, had, my dad had his own power company he produced his own power company. That was before electricity was out there. Wow. Oh, yeah. He, he uh, had um, uh, 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 a company that transferred rosin into turpentine, sugarcane into syrup. I mean, the guy was incredible. So I was following that all the time, all the time following that. And I just wish he was here today to see how it turned out. I just wish that so much. And your mother, though you didn't My mother know was him. the same way. My mother was the same way, hard working, high expectations. If a job is to be done, do it well. You do it once. Whatever you do, when you finish, you survey it. You survey it. Mm -hmm. You make sure it's right. And um, so she was just like him. Mm -hmm. And I, I had such wonderful parents, incredible parents. Um, and that's the reason I am what I am today. Now, speaking because of parents, of parents and grandparents, and I know as I was talking with you, Mrs. Jenkins, your, your family story is just as powerful in terms of uh, the way you grew up and, and some of your uh, background. Can you share that story to give perspective as well? Yeah, I was, my father uh, owned a dairy, and which was for a black man in the South, was a big feat. It was something that, uh, even though there were seven of us, and of course he was looking for boys to milk those cows, <laughs> but uh, you know, so but there happened to be six girls and one boy. Oh. So, so guess who milked the cows? <laughs> you know, you... It was no secret. The girls right. were the ones that were doing that. So my brother was the third one. I'm the eldest, and my sister, and my brother, and I were 
This was the days before milkers when they had the right. things that milked the cows. So that was two, 365 days a year, twice a day. So we always had uh, something that, uh, that you were to do. So it was hard work and the same kind of thing. Um, my grandfather on my father's side um, gave the uh, land and the and helped build the school that I attended. So it was giving was always a part of of what we were taught. Right. And what I found out later in life, which I didn't know until probably many, many years later, is that my grandfather was born, um, the plantation owner was his father. Wow. And uh, he was, um, and they didn't, they wouldn't allow him to, to go to school. So he didn't know how to read and write. My grandmother had taught him to write his name. So he knew how to sign his name and he himself had a business. And with many, uh, he owned land, and he had a, he himself had a dairy, mm -hmm. um, and he was like the matriarch of the community. But this was something that that we did. I noticed he would ask my father to read things to him, but I just never knew mm -hmm. all these things. And on my mother's side, there was, um, I think, the incident in the book that you're speaking of was when my aunt died, who was a Hammond, and Hammond. Uh, Mr. Hammond was the, he was the senator and also the governor of South Carolina. Hmm. And he would have been my great, great grandfather. Hmm. And uh, so it was just very interesting of all these things. And there were many things that happened. So hmm. growing up, you, you learned both sides of the culture. Right. And you knew um, what you could do and what you could not do. But you learned to work around it. And this is an was a big example of positive possibilities. Right. Because I, I watched my father do that. And I think all the things that I learned and what I am today uh, was a person who grew up on that dairy farm. Hmm. So the, the common theme as I hear you both talk is that uh, no matter what is what you're facing uh, in terms of the, the obstacles or the barriers, that hard work, core values, family, because both right. of you uh, mentioned family. I know you had uh, a large family with brothers and sisters that we'll talk about, and you had a large brothers, uh, a large family, brothers and sisters, but it was that family environment that made a difference and that work ethic right. that made a big difference as well. We're gonna take a short break and come back and talk more about the book and about the Jenkins Foundation and more about your story. Uh, so stay with us. We're gonna take this short break, and when we come back, We'll speak more with Dr. Matthew Jenkins and Mrs. Roberta Jenkins here on Long Beach Land. Want to make a video? Check out our content crash course. In three hours, you get a plan of production, film your ideas, and edit a finished product. Each class focuses on a different genre, style, or show format such as short films, how-to videos, talk shows, music videos, and more. Check out Padnet.tv for the latest theme of the class. Welcome back to Long Beach Lens. I'm your host, Derek J. Simpson, and we're enjoying a conversation with Dr. Matthew Jenkins and Mrs. Roberto Jenkins. And before we went to break, we were talking about both your families. And uh, now I want to move forward to Tuskegee University because that's a common denominator for you both because that's where you met. But let's talk about how you got there first, Dr. Jenkins, because I, I love the story of uh, you and your mom having that conversation. Well, you know, um, every Sunday my mother would, uh, after breakfast, uh, we would have a, a discussion, family meeting, and we talked about ethics and um, expectations, etc. cetera. So um, I loved the farm. I, um, I learned to drive the tractor and stuff when I was seven or eight drive truck and stuff like that. 
So she said, uh, after we had the meeting, she said, well, Matthew, um, uh, you're going to be graduating uh, sometime soon. Uh, uh, what do you, I, I want you to go to Tuskegee. I said, Tuskegee? <laughs> I don't want to go to Tuskegee. I love farming here. She said, well, uh, uh, you can't stay here. So I said, well, what am I going to do? She said, you figure that out. So I called my brothers at Tuskegee. I had two brothers and a sister at, at the time at Tuskegee. And I told them, I said, uh, Mom wants me to go to Tuskegee, and I don't want to go, but if I go, I want to find out what is the hardest subject they got. They said, veterinary medicine. I said, that's what I'll take. So I told her, I said, Mom, I'm going to take veterinary medicine at Tuskegee. She said, good. And uh, so that's you're how on I... You're away. <laughs> <laughs> now, when you got there, I, 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 this quote says uh, from your mom, uh, a goal is a useless dream until you have a game plan to make it a reality. Yeah, what's your game plan? What's your game plan? And I know that's a lot that you speak about. I in talk positive about game plans all the time because... If you don't have a game plan, you got to go. You got to have that game plan. And you turn it like a laser on that, on that um, goal. Mm -hmm. And it goes to it like that. Mm -hmm. You finish that, the next one, same thing. So you, this is part of who you are. Mm -hmm. And I, so it's a scientific way of achieving goals. Mm -hmm. And... Um, that's what that book does. It teaches you how to be successful. And one thing that you talk about in terms of success in life uh, early on is making sure that you choose the right mate in That's life. That's the most important thing out of everything about being successful. The mate and the friends that you have. Right. And a lot of times when you're in college, you, know, you want to play around and play around and play around. That's okay, but that's serious business. You don't realize how important that is. Right. And um, I had to test myself because I was kind of tied up with some some girls that um, heat wave. I, <laughs> I mean, I mean, you gotta read the book to learn about heat wave. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, if you don't have the strength. To overcome that, you live to regret it. And that's discipline. When you talk about strength, that's you're talking discipline. about having that personal you discipline. you got to have that personal yeah. discipline. Now, now, Mrs. Jenkins, I know you're sitting there with a gracious smile on your face, but when the two of you met and as you got married, and all, how, how have you found it uh, to be a, a complimentary relationship? Because you're not just a uh, wife, you've been mom, you're business partner, when you look at this book and you see all that's happened to go into this book, mm -hmm. what are some of your fondest reflections along the way that have brought you to today? Well, I think when we, when we, we met at Tuskegee and he always, in, when the vet school had a, had a big party, they, they had a big exam, right. they would always invite the girls to the parties and I would never go. So finally one day I was walking, to, going to the movie and he came along and he said, uh, where are you going? And I said, <coughs> excuse me, I'm going to the movie with my friend. And so he uh, said, well, do you mind if I go along? And I said, sure, if you want to, I don't care. <laughs> and uh, so we started talking, and uh, I started asking him some questions about himself and what he was thinking about and what was he planning on doing. And, you know, it made a lot of sense to me. So mm -hmm. I said, okay. And uh, so we started dating. It was a good relationship, and then he said, I have to take, go home with you and meet your parents. And I said, I can't take you home with me. Because <laughs> <laughs> I have a boyfriend at home, and I just can't oh. take you there. I, not right now. <laughs> but he insisted, so I said, okay. So I had to get my, I, I, so I took him home with me, and I had to get my mom to keep him company while I go tell my boyfriend I was getting married. <laughs> it was like. I wouldn't want to be that guy. <laughs> 
But it's uh, life has been it's been interesting. It's not it was we're personality wise we're very different people. I mean he's you know he's mm. it's all cut and dried for him. It's either right or wrong. I'm um, he's black and white. I'm I'm more gray. Mm -hmm. So I think we give, it gave us the benefit of being able to feed off of each other and um, mm. fight a lot sometimes too. But because <laughs> well, we don't necessarily agree on everything, but. Uh, it's been a good life and it's been interesting and I'm sure we've been a compliment to each other to, in order to be successful. It's been a, right. That's been part of what we ended up doing anyway. Now I know one of the things that you both agree is that caring brings people together and if, if you give of yourself that's that's important in life is, is to give back and that's led uh, ultimately to the Jenkins Family Foundation as well. Uh, can you share how that came about Dr. Jenkins and why well, it's important? <clears throat> Both of our families were involved in helping other people. In fact, when I was about eight years old, Mom and I were in the car together. And um, out of the blue, I asked my mom, I said, Mom, why do we do so much for other people? She would have us me carry stuff to somebody down there. They, they, come out, they come to the store and buy stuff and my mother would say, go give them such and such a thing. And we just gave away so, so much stuff. And um, you realize that um, that was part of the culture of giving. Mm -hmm. And um, so as an adult, we continue to do it. How much money do we need? If you give it all to your kids, you earn them. You do more harm than good. And uh, if you can find someone out there that's trying to do something and needs a, a helping hand, mm -hmm. they will appreciate it probably more than your kids. Right. Because if you dump a lot of stuff on your kids, you're wasting money. Hmm. Let you, me ask you. You do more harm than good. Right. You mentioned in the book uh, that one of the greatest discoveries during my lifetime was the values passed down from my ancestors and uh, the blood relations I call the lost tribe. Can you, if we only have about four minutes left, can you share your insight on what is exactly the lost tribe? The Lost Tribe is, you realize that we're all the same, really. We all have certain values um, that are important, like our um, integrity, um, high integrity, um, um, caring, um, um, not what we do necessarily for ourselves all the time, ourselves, but what do we do to other people? How many people did we, um, that were down, we had an opportunity to, and that's an opportunity, to lift, give them a lifting hand, and it's something they'll never forget. And from there, you have taught them how to do the same thing that you're doing. Right. You see? So you don't have all the anger and stuff like that. It's friendship. Right. It's love. And that's how we're supposed to be exist. We're supposed to love each other. We shouldn't hate each other. Regardless of who the person is, how tall, how short, what race, what color, what, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. We're all one. And I think that's the bad thing in this country. We've divided up people up, and it's, it's not good. Mm -hmm. And that's powerful hearing that from you, because if anybody should not be saying that, you would think it's someone who almost lost their father to beating brutality by the Ku Klux Klan, and yet here you are saying that hate is wrong, well, and, and it is. They, I always say to my parents is this, don't hate white people, black people, anybody else. You waste your energy when you hate other people. Mm -hmm. That's the energy you can generate <clears throat> to something that's more positive rather than negative. Mm -hmm. 
So uh, we've always gotten along with everybody. You know, I, we don't care about <laughs> how right. tall, how short. Who cares? It's about well, the common values that people share. Yeah. May I ask you, uh, before we're out of time, if you could both tell me if there's that that something that nugget that you really hope people take away from reading the book, Mrs. Jenkins. What would you say that you would like to have a reader of this book carry away as something that they thought, "Wow, I'm glad I read it because of this particular thing." What would you say about? Well, I that? think in his examples of of life and some of the things that we faced, it gives you a perspective on what you can do. They're not the, necessarily the same problems you might have. Right. It's not the same time in life, but you're facing the same circumstances many times. Mm -hmm. And the answer is the same, is that you have to work toward a goal. You have to decide how you're going to work with it, what it is, make it come to fruition. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's the big deal. So I think if there's anything that you're going to take away, it would be is I can do whatever it is that I've set my mind to. I work hard and I have people involved and there's always people out there, like I said before, I can't emphasize that enough. There are enough um, mentors and people who are willing to help because they're successful. You're no threat to them. Mm -hmm. So it's always easy to help mm -hmm. somebody else in that respect. So your, your threat comes from your peers more than anything else. Right. Well, man, we're out of time, but I'm not out of questions, so I'm going to have to someday just sit on the porch and not let you out unless you tell me some more and feed me some more. Thank you so much uh, for your time on this show. Thank you for watching this particular episode of Long Beach Lens. Uh, positive possibilities. Know that we all have positive possibilities in life. It's a must read for all of us, no matter how old, how young. And thank you again for watching Long Beach Lens.